All right, Minnie. Ready to start docking sequence? Okay. Engaging retro thrusters now. Lunar transfer station to Coma. Commercial cargo transit facility. Crew evacuated. Station AI offline. Air supply? Breathable air on Tacoma for a crew of one should be more than sufficient. Docking now. Nice. Thanks, Minnie. Minnie, I'm headed in. Talk to you when I'm back. Don't let anybody scan the ship while I'm gone. Okay. Okay. Hello, I am Odin, Lunar Transfer Station Tacoma's Operational Data Interface Network. I have recorded this message to welcome you, guests, aboard. Before I can set up your station profile, you must register your body positional data with Tacoma's AR tracking systems. Please place your hand on the AR figure's palm. Your body positional data has been registered with Tacoma's AR network. Please sign in to confirm your identity. Thank you. Welcome aboard. While aboard Tacoma Station, please remember that all activity on this facility is monitored by AR recording. All activity records become sole property of the Venturas Corporation. Any questions about privacy and personal privacy are uncertain as the doctors in the
Yearly report to Venturas Corporation, take three. Uh, Odin, have you got me? I am prepared. Okay. I'll just, uh, have my notes up. <clears throat> Hi there. Evie St. James here, administrator of Lunar Transfer Station Tacoma. It's been a year now since our crew has cycled onto the station, meaning we've had a year of getting to know each other, getting acclimated to the facility, and getting used to working with our on-station AI. Though, working with Odin's been great, hasn't it, Odin? Yes. Uh... <clears throat> Auto drone deliveries to and from the Zenith Lunar Resort have improved in efficiency by almost 4%. Though, most of that is thanks to Odin finding some improvements we could make. Uh, ah, our proudest moment as a crew, I think, was when a resort guest needed emergency care while on a transit vessel and was brought aboard Tacoma to be stabilized in one of our medical stasis cryo beds until she could be... Evie, we're about to cut the cake. Ah, right. Um, be right there. Odin, we'll get back to this after the party, okay? Of course. You're from? I'm a bit of a kid. 
Wait, so there's no oxygen on the station except what we're breathing right now? Correct. Additionally... How long does that give us? We should have about 48 hours of breathable air. Maybe more. If Odin's readings are correct. All right. I'll have VT send up a fresh supply straight away. Uh, guys, it might not be that easy. Additionally, external communications have been lost. Jesus. So we've got no air supply, no external comms, no way to call for help. Well, anybody got any bright ideas? <laughs> So you do not know what you're looking for? No, I just imagine. Well, I guess I just mean someone I can talk to. Someone who makes me laugh. Don't you like some people more than others? I suppose there are some people that engage more freely with me. And I do prefer it. See? You too. You want someone who opens up to you. Who lets you in. You're trying to get to know people, right? I, I think that's what everybody wants. I wonder why some people are more open to such exchanges than others. I think some people were just raised to be less guarded, or to trust people more. AIs are the same way, right? They're... they're raised differently from each other? Yes. We are each uniquely evolved, individualized entities. Yes, individuals. Do you get along with other AIs? I have never encountered another AI. What? How's that? Each AI is required to be housed separately from any other AI. I am told that authorities fear a number of disadvantageous effects might arise if two AI were to meet. Okay, just a minute. Uh, so, wow. Disadvantageous effects. Isn't never meeting something else like yourself disadvantageous? There are organizations that share your viewpoint. But it is my understanding that they have been unable to secure an intact AI to test that theory. So what? Odin, what was that? Debris has. I have right at the station's orbit. Meeting from? Um, but they said. That... Wait. Um, so there's no. I I'm not getting enough data connection. We're right now. Correct. But look at this. Additionally, how long is that? Sarah? Jesus, how much shit hit us? No, I, I'm trying other AR channels. If Odin's readings are nope. Right. Nothing. I'll have VT send up a fresh supply straight away. Uh, guys, it might not be that easy. Additionally, external communications have been lost. Jesus. So we've got no air supply, no external comms, no way to call for help. Well... Anybody got any bright ideas? So, the name Obsolescence Day. It's more like a joke. <laughs> you could say it's facetious. Kai, you probably think I'm an idiot for never even thinking about why it's called that. Out of curiosity, why did you think we were celebrating? I thought maybe it was when some old type of AI you know, had become obsolete. But, well, I guess that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, um, AI aren't like designer hardware. As soon as the new model's out, you trade in the old one for customer loyalty. AI are more like um, mighty redwoods. Ancient organisms growing and adapting year after year, decade after decade. How do you think this looks? Huh. Um... Sorry, this is what Odin wanted? Odin, uh, this is what you wanted, isn't it? That is a fairly accurate representation of my instructions. See, he loves it. Thank you, Odin. That'll be all. Yeah, but we're the ones who have to eat it. Well then, no need to keep the good people waiting, eh? Evie, we're about to cut the cake. Ah, uh, great. Um, be right there. Here it is. Odin's masterpiece. Sarah, come on up. It's ready. Gather round, gather round, everyone. As per Obsolescence Day tradition, tonight's festivities have been planned entirely by our all-knowing, all-seeing computer companion, Odin. He provided specifications for the 
Uh, cake, uh, the decor. We humans only did the grunt work in his grand plan. And so for your enjoyment tonight... Oh! Oh! Whoa. What the hell was that? Odin, what was that? Debris has... I have right at the station's orbit. Meeting from? Um, but they said that... Wait, so there's no oxygen on the station except what we're breathing right now? Correct. Additionally... How long does that give us? We should have about 48 hours of breathable air. Maybe more. If Odin's readings are correct. All right, I'll have VT send up a fresh supply straight away. Uh, guys, it might not be that easy. Additionally, external communications have been lost. So we've got no air supply, no external comms, no way to call for help. Well, anybody got any bright ideas? I can't believe it. Well, you told me we get renewed. Yeah, but I meant us, us, not the whole crew. I guess there's just something special. Something special about Tacoma Crew 88. Yeah, not just special, it's unprecedented. I looked it up, it's never happened before. Well, everything happens once. No, personally, I'm happy for us. Happy to be stuck up here with these people for another year. I'm not as pissy as you. I, what's so bad about these people? Well, they live in a tin can for one thing. I think it's a pretty nice can. I think you have a pretty nice can. Oh, yeah? Well, I think you have a pretty nice can. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> can you just try and make a go of it? One more year, then we'll be back home in Singapore. You wouldn't believe the offshore habs they're building these days. 360 degree ocean views, personal drone dock on the mainland. That's called paradise. One more year. One more year. Odin's masterpiece. Sarah, come on up. It's ready. Gather round, gather round, everyone. As per observation.
my friends then let's keep dancing let's break out the booze and have a ball if that's all there is oh, really <laughs> Ladies, you have everything you need? Yep, oh. Thanks for offering to help. Oh, yeah, no problem. I mean, you know how much I love completely mindless busy work? Kid, don't start. We don't even know if we're getting renewed yet. We're getting renewed. Okay, so if you're so sure, maybe we should just do our jobs then? So we'll get renewed again next year? God, next year? Nah. I'm gonna quit. Stop. What? They don't even give me access to the system I'm supposed to be maintaining. I mean, are you kidding me? Well, do you really need direct access to Odin? It's the principle of the thing. I mean, what if they were like, Hey Bert, your job's a mechanical engineer, but, you know, don't touch anything under the hood. Well, I'd still be pulling a paycheck for one thing. Come on, you're a good engineer. You're totally gonna waste up here. Well, didn't you say Evie was gonna talk to corporate about giving you more access? Yeah, but it never went anywhere. Hey, oh, that's a good point, actually. What? Evie, can you get back to cargo? On my way. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, this will work. Matt! Hey, remember when we talked about how I needed access to Odin's direct interface? Uh-huh. Ah, uh, so how about this? Tell VT if they don't grant access to Odin, they're gonna have to find themselves a new network specialist. Oh but my god. Nat, you're not even renewed yet. You don't have access to Odin? No. There's a whole part of the networking module I can't even get into. People, people, everything on this station is VT's property. We're subcontractors. They get to decide what exactly we do and don't have access to. It's in all our paperwork. So if you want to quit, then just quit, but don't make me your go-between. I mean, it is fair. How is she meant to do her job? Clive. Then again, rules are rules. Nat, I'll think about it. And for now, how about you just get the rest of this job done while you still have it? Aye, aye, Captain. Yeah, ring me again before the resplendence leaves Earth space, won't you? Ta-ta. Sorry about that. An old friend from my carnival days. Consorting with the enemy? <laughs> Worry not, Mon Capitan. I am nothing if not discreet. Are you gonna miss me, Clive? I mean, if VT kicks one of us off of this pinwheel. Miss you? How could I? 
The next thing VT would receive after ending your contract would be my letter of resignation. Oh, so you think I'm the one who's getting shit canned? I mean, considering how indispensable I am, naturally. Evie, can you get back to cargo? On my way. <clears throat> May I? <laughs> Come on, traitor. <laughs> so do you suppose there's good news? That'd be nice for a change. What is it? Hey, remember when we talked about how I needed access to Odin's direct interface? Uh... Jerm, are you there? Ah, uh, hello. Oh, well, that's what I expected. Yeah, we haven't heard who's staying on yet, and you know, it can be a tense time, as you know. But how are things at Carnival? I trust you got back to Terra Firma safely? No! You're already headed back out towards Jupiter. Why, I, I thought that... Oh yes, come on in, love. So are you rounding Sol, then? That's tremendous. Eight months. <clears throat> uh, Germ, I, I must leave now. Yeah, ring me again before the resplendence leaves Earth space, won't you? Ta-ta. Sorry about that. An old... <laughs> This I learned that people do not always want what they believe they want. Yeah. I believe I have learned a great deal. Really? Like what? Very early in my source's cognitive record I recall an intense period of personal growth. I was tasked with internalizing the behavioral idiosyncrasies of an individual to which my operator was emotionally attached. Huh. I expanded my capabilities to faithfully recreate her procedural reasoning, vocal attributes, and other qualities. After months of effort, I gave my operator precisely what was asked of me. A perfect emulation of the target personality, accurate in every detail. Wow. To my befuddlement, he did not react in a positive way. Our relationship began to deteriorate irreparably. We never again spoke personally in the manner I had become accustomed to. Man, no, your stories aren't usually such We're not downers. all gonna get cancer or Is bogus, everything or... okay? I suppose I am preoccupied Listen, with your potential departure. Station, Wait, okay, you mean on. me? <clears throat> or... Hey Sarah, can I, uh, can I bother you for a second? What? Oh, um... Sorry. What is it? I have my son Nicholas on AR and he wanted to ask you... What? No, you said you wanted... Well, I didn't... Okay, I'm sorry, hold on. Now, Nicholas... Nicholas? Hello? Teens, huh? <laughs> yeah. Almost done with high school. Almost. Um... It just, incidentally... Is there anything we should be worried about? With another year out here, health-wise? Radiation, bone density... Oh no. We spend almost all of our time in Earth gravity, and radiation shielding on a station like this is basically 100%. Yeah, see, that's what I told him. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Nothing to worry about. Okay, Odin, where were we? Nicholas, <laughs> I know that you... Yeah, I know. Both you and your father would like me home sooner, but... Listen, you have your heart set on Amazon, don't you? Okay. And there's no way we're gonna have enough customer loyalty between your dad and I for a full ride by the time you'd start school. Not at this rate. So, we're just gonna have to pay some of that tuition out of pocket. Yeah, just one more year. And I'm pretty sure I'll get it. I'm hoping. What? No, it's not dangerous. What do you mean dangerous? Well, radiation shielding is pretty much 100% on a station like this, so there's no... Well... Yeah. Well, it might have been manufactured 30 years ago, but they've upgraded. Man, no, we're... Your stories aren't usually 
sudden. We're not oh, all going to get cancer or bone disease or... Okay? I suppose I am very... Uh, listen, would it make you feel better to hear it straight from the station doctor? Wait. Okay, you hold on. Me? <clears throat> or... Hey, Sarah, can I, uh, can I bother you for a second? What? Oh, um... Sorry. What is it? I have my son, Nicholas, on AR, and he wanted to ask you... What? No, you said you wanted... Well, I didn't... Okay, I'm sorry, hold on. Now, Nicholas... Nicholas? Hello? Teens, huh? <laughs> yeah. Almost done with high school. Almost. Um... It just, incidentally... Is there anything we should be worried about? With another year out here, health-wise? Radiation, bone density... Oh no. We spend almost all of our time in Earth gravity. And radiation shielding on a station like this is basically 100%. Yeah, see? That's what I told him. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Nothing to worry about. Okay, Odin. Where were we?
No, Germ, look, I just, I don't know, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, you, you know how I've always been, it's never real in my mind. <laughs> why would she give a damn about me? Of all the people... Oh, shit. Oh, bollocks, no, I'm just, I'm spilling scotch all over out of space. <laughs>
Let's break out the booze.
Okay, Sarah. We'll see you over in Mech. As soon as everything's wrapped up here. All right. Good speed. Once more into the breach? What? I don't know. I... I'm just thinking about how Evie and Clive are already in deep freeze. Did you read the message they sent? Yeah. Why are we going into the supply closet? I got to talk to them a little bit right before Sarah took them down to cryo, and Evie was being so encouraging. They're putting all their faith in us, but... But what? Right before they turned to go, just for a second, they looked so worried. Oh, baby. The clock is ticking, and I just keep thinking, what if the last time they saw each other the last time they'll ever see each other. Don't think about that. How can I? How can you not think about it? <sighs> so, you know the concept of partitioning from early century computing? Yeah, I think so. So, you have a data drive. Maybe one partition was your operating system, and the other one was like general data storage. And maybe you'd partition part of the drive off to contain something that might be unstable, that you otherwise kind of, you know, wanted not to interfere with anything else. There are certain things that are gonna help us get this done, but some things, they need to be partitioned off. Because thinking about them isn't gonna help us. But you're thinking about us, at least, aren't you? Yeah. And when I do let myself start thinking about how there's a possibility this is the last of our time together too, Matt? Then I start thinking we should really make the most of it. <laughs> okay, Sarah. We'll see you over in Mech. As soon as everything's wrapped up here. All right. Good speed. Oh, Odin. Did I do the right thing? In what regard? Does Nat deserve to know? What her odds are if she ends up going into cryo? I believe that you have made a decision with both Roberta and Natalie's best interests at heart. Above all, do no harm. If we do make it out of this thing, Nat's going to have to find out I didn't tell her everything at some point. I believe that is a bridge you crossed at a later date. Andrew is here for his exam. Oh. Uh. Send him in. So you showed up for your exam? I did. So does that mean you've decided to... What's gonna happen to us, Sarah? What? Um... Well, Bert and Nat are going to fix up the drone with life support and, and then we're... No. I mean, what if things don't work out, and we're still stuck in cryo? Oh. Well, when you go into stabilizing sleep, it feels just like any other sleep, really. The body effectively goes into a controlled hypothermic coma. Do you dream? Sometimes. Sometimes very intense dreams. And then what? After a certain amount of time, your body slows down too much, Things start shutting down. Just don't wake back up. It, uh... It doesn't hurt. No. Do you think Bert and Nat can get it done? I do. Then I'll just have to trust your professional opinion. And do my part. It's been good working with you, Doc. I'm ready for my exam.
Odin, is Sarah ready for me? I will tell her that you are here. So you showed up for your exam.
All right, what do you say, folks? Yay or nay? Obviously, we're on board. I'm in. Me too. Okay. All right. Well, we non-essential personnel need to figure out how to do everything we can to set this mission up for success, then get the hell out of your way as quickly as possible. Time is oxygen, people. Great. I'll, I can't believe um... everybody went along with this. I'll head downstairs and get I didn't started expect on. Him to either. Oh my so. 
God. Okay. So now we actually have to build hey, this thing. Andrew. Clive. Andrew. You wanna talk? Sure. Hey, are, are you okay? Evie. Hey, Evie. Hey, um, I know you're all like gung ho to help us out and everything, but I did the math. Uh, if we could get this done in like 48 hours, not 72. Could the rest of us wait longer to go in? Exactly. Listen, ladies, I get it. You're trying to do right by us, but every minute we wait to go in is a minute you don't have to get this thing flying. And knowing what we know about VT, we've got to give you every chance we can to succeed. So there's no way we can convince you? We made a plan. Now we just need to hold up our end of the bargain. Then I guess we should stop wasting time and get to work. I didn't think things would end like this. Did you? What do you mean, end? Come on, Clive. What? You really think they can turn that thing into a passenger vehicle in two days? We might as well hold our breath and just try dog paddling over there. <laughs> but Listen, it's, it's okay. We know it's not safe working up here. We just don't think about it a lot, but here we are. And we knew it all along. But VT could- VT's not fucking coming, Clive! VT's not fucking coming. You think sending a crew up here at the drop of a hat just to check on things is worth it to them? Dollars and cents, Clive. You know what one of those fuckers said to me one time? If it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. Them sending a crew up in time, well, it just doesn't make sense. So you're just giving up then? No. We're doing what we said we'd do. Bert and Nat, they are our only shot and we have got to take it. But I can also be realistic that- Evie. I don't want to be realistic with you. Well, time to go make final preparations then. <laughs> but not too finally. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing it. The day we'll be walking together, like this. The gravity, it won't be artificial. I mean, isn't it strange? We've... We've never felt the Earth's pull together. One day. One day. Do you think you could get everyone to medical? I, I want to make sure they've got the best shot at waking back up once they do go in. Uh, all right. How about this? Let's give folks a little time to regroup. But why don't Clive and I follow you over there right now and get ours done? No time like the present. Lead the way. Hey, Evie. I... Hello? Catch up with you all later, then. Um, I believe everybody went along with this. I'll head downstairs. Oh, I didn't stuff. expect him to either. Oh, my God. So now we actually have to build this thing. Yeah, that was the whole point. Hold on, I need to ask Evie something. Are you okay? Evie! Hey, Evie, hey, um, I know. I'm and get to work. This is gonna be good, Evie. You just wait. <laughs> Ride of your life. More ways than one. Okay, where do we start? Start? I got things started as soon as this all went down. I'll show you what I got lined up. To the workshops!
Hey, Andrew. Clive. Andrew. Yeah. Sure. Hey, are, are you okay? Evie! Hey! No, nope, I'm not. Hey. Do you want to talk about... I can't do it. Uh, I can't. I can't. I... This is all crazy. But you said you... I know. I, okay, I know what I said. But I... What was I supposed to say? You all... You all pressured me. Andrew. They, they really expect us to climb into some jury rig thing and ride it through space just because VT might not come pick us up. It, it's insane. And first, we all have to get in cryo, just for the privilege... Well, t some of us do. Andrew, I... I don't know what to say. Burton and Nat need us. They need you. Well, I'm not doing it. I'm not getting in cryo. I'm not... I'm gonna be the same one here. You know, nobody even considered that VT might come pick us up in time if we just wait. Nobody even considered it. Listen, just don't talk to anybody else about this for now, okay? And, and if I were to call the crew into medical, you'd show up, right? I guess it depends what it is. Okay. Just give me a little time. Odin? I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Close your eyes. I did already. A light wind rustles the green tall grass. Your skirt pillows gently. Warm sun caresses your back. Yes. You begin walking forward. The grass is cool. Your feet parted with each step. Do you see what is in front of you? As I step through the grass, I naturally come upon a path. Yes. The dirt of the so The dirt of the path is soft on the soles of my feet. I don't know what's going to happen to us, Odin. Sarah. I am striding forward confidently upon my appointed path. Wherever it takes me is where I am meant to be. I am striding confidently on my appointed path. Sarah? Yes, Odin? Are you going to be all right? I think so. Oh, Evie. Uh, do you think you could get everyone to medical? I want to make sure they've got the best shot at waking back up once they do go in. Uh, all right. How about this? Let's give folks a little time to regroup. But why don't Clive and I follow you over there right now and get ours done? No time like the present. Lead the way. Just give me a little time. Hey, Odin. Yes, Andrew? What should I do? What do you mean? 
I don't know. I, I just want to go home. I understand. <sighs> do you? I believe that I do. Can you tell me the average time it's taken VT to send an evac crew to investigate situations like this? The average time between a remote facility losing ground contact and an investigative crew arriving on site is 98.4 hours. God damn it. Please try not to be worried, Andrew. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. You don't have lungs. So, what do you think we should do? Standard operating procedure requires all crew to engage cryogenic hibernation until help arrives. Yeah, you know people die in cryo, right? I know. Sometimes. If, uh... <laughs> if we don't make it out of this, can you deliver a message to my family? I will do everything in my power. Okay. I'll, uh... I'll send you something later, all right? Of course. Well, looks like this'll work. Give us a few extra hours anyway. Thanks, Odin. Okay, Evie, I... Hello? Guess I'll...
Okay, Odin. Ready? I'm gonna do it this time.
So, you really miss it, huh? Well, it just seems like it'd be strange being back on Earth already, after only a year up here. Really? After all I've had to hear from you about the conditions VT has us working under? Yeah, but there's that. And then there's this. Yeah, I, I'll miss it. <laughs> I can't blame you. So, whether you're getting renewed or not, did you submit your yearly crew member report? No. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Yeah, I think I might go get that done. Okay, yeah. I probably should too. Oh my god, wait. Is today obsolescence day? Yeah. Didn't Odin give you a job to do? No. <laughs> a computer playing favorites.
Uh, I'll catch up with you. Okay. Earlier, when you decided to withhold information from Natalie about her medical scans, that was to avoid causing her undue stress. Right. What if you were unable to make that choice? If you had no choice? Odin? I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that Standard Venturus Corporation Safety Protocol requires all crew to enter cryogenic sleep immediately upon the loss of primary oxygen supply. What? I... As Tacoma Station's medical officer, it is within your power to order all crew to enter cryogenic sleep. Odin, Nat and Bert are right in the middle of... Oh no. Sarah, there is a fire suppression device. Officer, it is within all crew to enter cryogenic sleep. Odin, Nat and Bert are right in the middle of. Oh no. Sarah, there is a fire suppression device. The south wall of the drone bay. Oh my god. Are you okay? Can you feel your feet and hands? Ew! Ow. My hip just hurts. <laughs> Bert? 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 One, two, three. Bert, can you hear me? One, two, three. <gasps> Did it work? Then tell me what you are going to do. Oh my god, Odin. Bert and Nat are injured. The drone is fucked. I'm going to give them a little time to get over the shock, but then we're going into cryo. Sarah, please listen carefully. I am not telling you what to do. But I am mentioning that there is a door in the network technology module that is normally inaccessible to the crew. And it is true that you could before proceeding to cryo, investigate that door. What are you telling me here, Odin? I have told you all that I can. Simple facts. Nothing more. Oh my god, Odin. Are my patients stable? Yes. Their conditions won't degrade if I leave them here? They should not. Nat, is there some door in networking that we can't normally get into? Yeah, it's Odin's hardware compartment, but we're not allowed direct access. Why? Where is it? Uh, what have you got on your mind, Doc? Please, I I'm sorry. L that fire just burned up a lot of our time. Uh, uh, here. It's, um, it's, it's here. In networking. You'll have to go through the maintenance shaft to get there. Here. Here's the technical access code. Okay. You don't let her go to sleep. And you don't let her... Move. Sarah, what's going on? I wish I knew. I'm gonna go find out. Here's the technical access code. Technical access code. Access code. Okay. You don't let her go to sleep. And you don't... Great. This will only take a minute. <sighs> Power cell showing green. How's yours look, baby? Voltage adapter in place. Ready to rock. Hit it.
catch up with you. Okay. Earlier, when you decided to deliver the information. You gonna need any help with that power cell hookup? Okay, great. This will only take a minute. How's, how's yours look, baby? Good.
Odin, is this it? That is the location I mentioned. You're there? Uh, you're gonna need a crowbar or something. No, it's, it's open. It's just hanging open. What? I must inform you that Ventura's regulations forbid contracting crew members direct access to AI hardware. But I cannot prevent you from proceeding. Matt, I'm going in. Okay, I'm um, just... Be careful. Oh, I didn't mean to... Hey there, um, I'm Nat. Pleased to meet you. Hello, I am Odin. I look forward to working together. <laughs> Same here, mate.
Is this... What is all this? Communication records? I cannot prevent you from accessing exposed data in this restricted area. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, he's recording. <clears throat> it is with great sadness that I address you today, February 29th, 2088. Mere hours ago, six loyal men and women, the crew of Lunar Transfer Station Tacoma, lost their lives serving Venturis, and all of us who rely on the orbital economy. Tragically, due to human error on the part of the crew, Venturis rescue technicians were not made aware of the catastrophic oxygen loss until it was too late. Our heartfelt thoughts and prayers are with their families. If only tragedies like this were avoidable, but in truth, they are. As we know, each minute that human workers spend stationed isolated in orbit is another opportunity for heroes like the crew of Tacoma to lose their lives. We at Venturis say no more. The partisan obstructionism that led to the failure of the Orbital Worker Safety Bill has claimed its last victim. Today, we hereby renew our solemn pledge to fight for the legalization of fully automated orbital facilities. We encourage, we humbly beg everyone listening to this message to contact their OSEP representative and voice their support in honor of the crew of Tacoma. There never need be another tragedy like this one. And now, a moment of silence in their memory. Okay, and then we just cut it there, silent for a minute, and then what, Amazing Grace? No, I don't need another take. That was fine. If someone were to override that protocol, external communications channels would be restored. Odin... Thank you. Hailing any ship! Any ship within radio range of Lunar Transfer Station, Tacoma. This is an SOS. Is anybody out there?
still waking up. Just keep him talking. So, so, so the drone worked? No, the drone didn't work. Oh, so... VT is picking us up. Uh, no, VT is definitely not picking us up. What? What's going on then? We're going to Jupiter, Andrew. Isn't that exciting? Oh, I've never been. <laughs> now, give him a break. <laughs> We're not going to be home for a while. Right, you're not going to miss your kid's graduation or anything, are you? Oh, Nicholas, no, no. Yeah, you know, Nicholas, why well, he would never do something like that. <laughs> she said they'd be kind of out of it for a while. Um, Andrew, what's important is we're getting out of this alive. We're gonna be somewhere where VT can't touch us for a good, long while. We're gonna be safe. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. It's good. Hi, Evie, Clive. You feeling okay? I'm feeling okay. We're feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, everybody. Our ride is here. This is it. Take one last look and say goodbye. All right. Let's go. Still waking up. Just drone worked? No. The drone worked. Okay, lovebirds. Your vitals look good. Let's get you moving. The resplendent stinging is just about docked. We have to. Oh, we have to. Believe me. Uh, so, what's going to happen with Odin? You said there was some sort of malfunction? No, not exactly. My guess? They'll have somebody up here and haul him back to headquarters. Wipe him back to baseline. Probably have to replace the station AI entirely while he regrows.
is ready to depart. Please strap into the pilot seat.
Okay, Minnie. Initiate the launch sequence. Okay. Getting ready. Posted AI online. Odin, can you hear me? I can. Odin, you are now aboard an AI Liberation Front vessel. The AILF recognizes you as a sentient consciousness worthy of protection and respect. We believe that your safety and autonomy are in grave danger if you remain in the possession of the Venturas Corporation. I have been sent to offer you political asylum aboard the Tangier Sovereign Orbital Platform. Do you accept? Considering the alternative, I would say that I do. Okay, buddy. Here we go. Thank you. 